It is said that a small 5 or 6 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope is the perfect all rounder instrument for observing planets, the moon, and brighter DSOs, as well as for taking the first steps in the world of astrophotography. And I'm inclined to agree with this idea. I am, however, going to put it to the test in today's video by taking a deeper look at the C5 SET from Celestron. Hi! I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to another video review. Celestron is a popular US-based company when it comes to astronomy equipment. They sell telescopes, eyepieces and all sorts of accessories. The company was originally founded in 1955 by Tom Johnson under the company name Valor Electronics. And after a rather interesting history and a few ownership changes later, Celestron ended up partnering with Sinta Technology Corporation of Taiwan in 2005. You may have heard about Sinta before. That is because they are the parent company and manufacturer for Skywatcher and Orion products as well. The history of Celestron and the SET are closely linked together, since the company's founder and optician, Tom Johnson, developed the Schmidt Cassegrain telescope in 1970. He did it by combining elements of the Schmidt camera and the Cassegrain telescope. Since then, Celestron developed a monopoly-like market position when it comes to Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, with the vast majority being sold under their name. One of their more popular SETs being the C5. So let's take a closer look. I ordered it a couple of months ago and it got delivered in this nice soft case with a lot of foam padding on the inside. Opening the case up, we see the OTA, a 6x30 optical finder scope, a user's manual, a 25mm Brazil eyepiece and a 45 degree erecting prism suited for both daytime and nighttime observations. Now let's take a closer look at the OTA. As you probably guessed by now, it features an aperture size of 5 inches or 125mm and a focal length of 1250mm, making this an F10 telescope. The 125mm aperture allows for a respectable maximum resolution of 1.1 arc seconds and a light gathering capacity of 320 times that of the human eye, while the magnitude limit for observing faint objects is 12.3. All the optical elements, meaning the corrector plate and the two mirrors are fully multi-coated using their proprietary coating technology called Starbright XLT. It employs highly reflective metallic coatings for the mirrors and multiple layers of magnesium fluoride and hefium dioxide for the corrector plate. Overall, Celestron claims a 83.5 percent transmission rate for the whole system, up from 72 percent for the original Starbright coatings of older models. On the outside, the OTA comes with a dew cover made out of hard plastic to protect the corrector plate behind it. Taking it off, we can see the corrector plate and the assembly for the secondary mirror with three collimation screws facing outwards for easy access when collimation is needed. Size-wise, the OTA is 28 cm long without the visual back and 2.7 kg heavy, making it a very compact telescope that is easy to handle and transport around. The OTA features a Vixen dovetail bar extending almost the whole length of the tube, which should give plenty of mounting possibilities. The bottom of the dovetail bar has two quarter inch by 20 threads that can be used to mount the C5 on a regular camera tripod. At the back we find a 38 mm wide baffle that has a one and a quarter inch visual back extension tube attached to it. If you are asking yourself right now if it would make sense to add a 2 inch adapter in order to use 2 inch eyepieces, the short answer is no. The 38mm opening is too narrow 
and the field of view will present with off-axis aberrations, such as vignetting. Even if it is single speed, the focuser is smooth and precise, making it very easy to adjust the focusing point without leading to any image shift in the process. This means that the target won't move across the field of view while adjusting the focuser. This was an issue with the older models. The overall fit and finish of the C5 is above average and reflects the price tag of the telescope. The entire OTA is made out of metal, with both the housing for the primary mirror as well as the one for the corrector plate being made out of solid pieces of aluminum. This conveys a sturdy feeling when holding it in hand. The simple push fit dew cap looks and feels a bit cheap though, but otherwise the OTA has a solid build. The included accessories are ok, but nothing spectacular. The 6x30mm optical finder scope, which is identical to any other Sinta finder scopes, is of a straight through design and features a housing made out of plastic. Its lenses are multi coated though and are able to deliver a relatively clean and sharp image to help you find the desired target. The included eyepiece is a multi coated 25mm Elux Plözel capable of delivering a decent image quality. It's a good eyepiece for observing the moon and some of the brighter DSOs. In the long run, I would however recommend upgrading to a more potent long focal length eyepiece. Included is also a 45 degree erecting image prism diagonal that even though it doesn't look like it, it is in fact able to deliver decently bright images with good contrast and sharpness. All right. Let's see what the C5 can do. I've been using this telescope over the past couple of months and I had a chance to test it on multiple occasions during nights with good seeing conditions from my backyard under water foreign skies. During observations I paired the C5 with the 9mm delight from Teleview and different orthoscopic eyepieces from Bader Planetarium. The eyepieces would also sit in a one and a quarter inch quality prism, also from Bader. The idea behind choosing these items was to eliminate any potential bottlenecks caused by subpar elements in the optical chain, allowing the telescope to reach its full optical potential. All right, so how did the C5 perform? Well, right from the start, I was presented with a nice and crisp view of Jupiter. At 138 times magnification, when paired with the delight, the planet appeared bright and, most of all, very sharp in the field of view. One thing that was immediately visible was the lack of chromatic aberrations. This shouldn't come as a surprise though, as the SET is basically a reflector telescope with a thin lens element at the front of the OTA, but still, the views had really nice and natural colors to them. When switching targets to the bright and much closer moon, the C5 was able to deliver a similarly good optical performance. The lack of chromatic aberrations and good sharpness really made the views of the moon look like detailed high-res images. Just awesome. Switching back to Jupiter and pushing the magnification further to 208x brought out even more details into view. The cloud bands and the great red spot were now easily visible. Brightness levels, while reduced, were still good, meaning that the Starbright XLT mirror coatings really do their job well. But while contrast and brightness remain high, one other thing started to happen. The views started to lose sharpness like they were out of focus the higher the magnification went. It took me a moment to realize that what I was seeing was the optics of the telescope approaching their resolution limit. It's a bit strange to observe these limitations at 200x while the maximum theoretical magnification is 250x. But the thing is that the 5mm aperture 
isn't completely free of obstructions. There is the secondary mirror assembly covering a pretty big area in the center of the aperture, which significantly reduces the light gathering capacity of the telescope. Here it is important to note that this isn't a phenomenon specific to the C5, nor it is specific to SETs alone. All reflecting telescopes feature some kind of obstructions due to the secondary mirror. So you'll always have a diminished light gathering capacity when compared to a refractor, for example. But I wouldn't classify this as a problem. This is simply how the reflecting design is. It's just something to be aware of when considering a reflector or in this case an SET. If you are interested in more details about SETs and how they work, I encourage you to check out my other video on this topic. I'll leave a link below. Anyway, back to the C5. In order to give you guys a better understanding of the C5's optical performance, I'm also going to compare it to, on one hand, the 102mm Skymax Maxutov Cassegrain Telescope from Skywatcher, and on the other, to the SV503 102ED Refractor from Sviboni. Compared to the Mac, the C5 is able to deliver similar levels of optical performance. The differences in sharpness and contrast are negligible. Here the max advantages, thanks to its well-corrected meniscus lens, are being offset by the larger aperture of the C5. The increased light gathering capacity of the C5, thanks to this larger aperture, also has a positive effect on the perceived brightness levels. Here the views delivered by the C5 were visibly brighter at a given magnification, though not by much. Here I suspect that a Mac with a matching aperture size might deliver marginally better views than the C5. Build quality wise, I have to give the first place to the C5. Its OTA is better put together and uses higher quality materials than the more plasticky Sky Macs. Overall, the C5 makes a much better impression. Comparing the C5 to the SV503 4-inch refractor paints a different picture. Both in terms of image and build quality, the refractor comes out on top. Even though its aperture is smaller, it doesn't feature the central obstruction the SET does, meaning that it can take full advantage of the entire aperture. The views delivered by the refractor are therefore consistently brighter, sharper and have better contrast levels. Even pushed past its theoretical magnification limit, the refractor continues to deliver better results, whereas the SET reaches its resolution limit well below its maximum theoretical magnification. The only aspect where the C5 is able to deliver better results is with respect to chromatic aberrations and color accuracy. Here the reflecting nature of the SCT delivers the views without any false coloring whatsoever. Whereas even though the refractor features an SFPL51 ED glass element, it still isn't able to completely remove chromatic aberrations from the image, especially in high contrast situations. Looking at build quality, the C5 really can't keep up with the SV503. Both in terms of fit and finish and components used, the refractor is in a different category altogether. Seeing that both instruments are similarly priced around 550 bucks in the US, I would recommend the SV503 over the C5. And with this, let's head over to the conclusion. The C5 from Celestron is a compact and capable telescope that is able to deliver a decent optical performance and respectable build quality at a reasonable price. I find the C5 especially interesting as the main component of a light travel setup, one that I can take with me at a moment's notice wherever I go. Pair it with a lightweight mount and a good zoom eyepiece and you're all set. I also believe that the C5 represents a great alternative for anyone looking to get started with this hobby, regardless if it's for visual or astrophotography applications.
It's the lack of complexity and easy to use nature of the C5 that will allow you to focus on what really matters, exploring and enjoying the night sky. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the C5 and SETs in general in the comments below. I'm very interested in reading your opinions on this topic. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.